So I've gotten some feedback from users that are having some issues with striping, and I wanted to just create this video to address some of the more common questions that I get and offer some tips and tricks and troubleshooting and best practices to make sure that your striping is working in your model. Um, the first one I want to call attention to, I'm going to rely on the section hierarchy to show the differences here. A lot of our users are losing their stripe. So you'll see this white skip dash line between my two common lanes here. Um, if I move this common lane up, so let's move that up to a height of one and this one as well, you'll see that stripe didn't come with it. That's a result of this stripe not being attached to either of the lanes next to it. You'll see when I click this icon here, that that stripe is now going to be attached to this common lane here on the left. And you'll see that's indicated by that yellow stripe between the common lane and stripe as well. So now if I move this common lane, that stripe is going to come with it. And you'll see when I move that back into place that that stripe is alongside it and staying right below it in the section hierarchy. The other thing that attachment does is adjust with heights. So as I move this common lane up, you'll see that stripe is coming up in elevation with it. If I were to change which lane that this stripe is attached to, for instance, I, if I want to attach this stripe to this lane on the right, I can click that clip and you'll see that stripe jump down to that lane on the right. Um, so oftentimes, as users are pulling in stripes to their model, those stripes may not be attached to the lane next to it. This is often the reason why, and if you come into your hierarchy and start unchecking and checking that clip box, um, you'll be able to bounce those stripes right back into place. I found often the reason this is happening is that when people are adding stripes between lanes, they're using this add striping button up here or they're going and adding the stripe from the section right here. So you can bring that in and snap that into place. When you add those stripes individually, by default, it's not clipping to a lane on either side. A nice way to change your workflow to get stripes that will automatically link to your sections so you don't have to worry about this problem is to select the section that you want the stripe around and press S on your keyboard or you can right click that section and click this surround with striping. You'll see what that does is if there's a stripe on one side of that lane, it's not going to add a new one. But if there is a side of that lane that doesn't have a stripe, it's going to add it. And you'll see in my hierarchy by default, since I surrounded this section with striping, that that stripe is now automatically clipped and attached to that lane on the left. Um, that S shortcut is great, but keep in mind if you're doing it on a section of road that might be next to a different type of section like a curb and gutter um, that it might add an extra stripe over there. Also, I do see uh, occasionally some people have multiple stripes bunched up. So if I uncheck these um, and put these up next to the lane up here, um, you'll start to see maybe two or three different stripes on top of one another. There's nothing in Beyond Typicals that's preventing that from happening, but again, that's something you can go to your section hierarchy and see what's in your model and help diagnose that problem and get your stripes sorted out. A related problem here is that these stripes cannot drop below a height of zero. So while you can adjust your sections down below a height of zero, let's put this one at minus one and the one next to it at minus one. So I can move those down, but those stripes will not come with it. We'll have a separate video discussing moving sections below zero, but it's best practice if you wanted to put something below zero, instead you should raise everything else up. So if I wanted this to sit at minus one and everything else at zero, the better practice would be to bring these to zero and raise everything else up to one. That would basically prevent this striping issue from happening. I also wanted to discuss lane marking. So you'll see here in our default project, we have this two-way left turn lane, and I'm sure you're familiar with how to engage double striping and show which stripe is continuous, whether it's the left or the right. Uh, that's pretty basic, 
but ultimately uh, a lot, not a lot of people know about the marking option as well as marking spacing. Um, so I've heard people wish that these two left turn lane arrows were closer together. A quick way to do that would just be to reduce the marking spacing between those two and it will just center that in the section length of your model. Alternatively, if you had a longer model and you wanted to see multiple stripes, you could always go into our assets and grab a left turn marking arrow. I'm searching for left and then I can grab that arrow and just place it as an asset right next to it. And then I can rotate that mark uh, appropriately using our asset placement tools here. And you'll see it's a scaled a little bit bigger, but I can simply just scale that down and move that into place. Some of the other marking options include crosswalks. Again, that could be something that you could combine as a mid-block crosswalk by reducing that marking spacing. Or we have some straight arrows, some turn arrows, an HOV marking, some words on pavement. So those are plenty of options. But again, if you don't see a certain pavement marking, I recommend checking in our assets. And it might be something that you can bring in individually into your lanes as a placed asset. Most of our pavement markings can be found by just checking this decals box and you'll see that we've got words on pavement, bike symbols, and other markings. One other thing I'd like to recommend is if you don't see a specific word on pavement, you could consider placing a custom label into your model and rotating it down so that it sits on the pavement. Just as an example, let's say I want the word only on the lane. I can create that in the custom label area and then up that text size. Let's make it nice and big. We'll go with 80. And then all we have to do is take our label background color and change this A value all the way down to zero, which will make it transparent. And then we can look at our label rotation here so I can rotate this in the X direction down to negative 90 so that it sits parallel with the road and then I can just move that into place where I need to see that on the pavement. So just another way that you could customize uh, words on pavement if you don't see those in our list. Another tip I want to offer here with marking is that you could consider using our markings as primary or secondary assets in a section type. So while I do know a lot of our users wish to put in diagonal marking on a buffer space, maybe between a common lane and a bike lane, I can go ahead and show a couple different ways to do that as an example. The fastest way could be to use our flat median section. And the flat median section has a marking pull down that contains diagonal white and diagonal yellow hatch striping. Um, that's different than our shoulder, which doesn't have those marking options and the common lane options. So if you are looking for a very quick way to put in uh, like a painted buffer, you could add striping around the flat median. I'll change those to solid lines. Then I can change the marking to diagonal hatch white, adjust the width to something narrower like two feet, and then change the texture from the default brushed concrete to an asphalt surface. There we have a very quick way of showing a white diagonal line. What I want to warn you though is that this marking pulldown doesn't have the same kind of customization power that it would if those markings were assigned as a primary or secondary asset. What I mean there is I can't change the rotation, I can't change the thickness, I can't space this out anymore. I'm really limited with what I can do with those markings. So I'll show you maybe a more in-depth or thorough way to put in those markings. And that could be to use our shoulder section, which is again by default at roadway elevation. If we wanted to rename this buffer, we could. I'll go ahead and leave that at four feet for now, um, but then look at our primary asset pulldown list and see that I don't have any stripings in here by default, but I can easily bring those in by either changing the properties of the shoulder section, so I can change the asset properties here, or if I knew which asset I wanted to bring into that section, I could pick the asset 
and then add in the section types where I want that asset to be as a pull down. So I'll put in this stripe short as one option for the shoulder. And then I'll also go and type out diagonal and get those thicker diagonal lines and bring those into the shoulder. And now I'll show you the difference between those. So now because I've made those two assets tagged to the shoulder section, I can come over here to my buffer, which was originally placed as a shoulder. And those two options will now be in this dropdown list. So I've got the stripe short option first. Um, this you'll see is by default when I turn that on spaced at 25 feet down the section, but I could easily change the rotation of those. I can change the spacing on those. I can change the internal horizontal offsets. I could even make those thicker by unchecking the asset scaling and scaling in, let's see the Y direction. So that's one option it, it, that offers a lot of customization there. Um, it's also good for, you know, a parking lane where I might want to see white lines delineating that parking lane. I can adjust the spacing and rotation of those too. Um, that other option that I had selected was the diagonal hatch marking. And as I reset all my transformations back to where they were, you'll see that I can again, adjust the scaling on these bars and change the rotation, change the spacing. And if I want to be really particular about scale, I can boost that Y axis up by just a hair. Again, this is going to be dependent on how wide the section is. Um, so for instance, if I made this wider, I'm going to want to increase that Y scale to hit those outer white stripes. So just a couple of options there. I think for really quick, that flat median can work. But if you're looking for the right look of those lines, consider placing them as a primary asset and playing with some of the transformation abilities there. Finally, I had a question from a user about the spacing of a stripe from a curb. So where you would have a lane directly adjacent to a curb, you'll see that that stripe can be partially hidden by that curb. Uh, so I can go ahead and select it. Let's make that a solid yellow line so it's a little bit easier to see. And always for my yellow pavement, if I want to match what's out there, I usually add a little bit of uh, or decrease a little bit of the green value. So I usually go with a red of one, green of about 0.5, and blue of zero. Um, that's more common to the yellow stripes I see out on the roads, at least in the Midwest. So you'll see that that stripe is somewhat hidden by that curb. There's a couple of different options there. A really quick one could be to take that stripe and just engage double striping. And you'll see what that's going to do is push that stripe to the right. Um, you will see a little bit of that other stripe kind of peeking out through the curb, just as those both are getting cut off by the front edge of the model. But if you're looking for a very quick solution, and maybe you're looking at a camera view over here, um, that could be the easiest way to take care of that spacing. Um, secondly, if you didn't want to use that and just have a single stripe and perhaps set it off by a certain distance, which was the case with the user I was working with, um, it could be helpful just to put in a very narrow shoulder. So let's go ahead and drop in a shoulder there. And then I'll go to my section hierarchy and move that stripe between the shoulder and the common lane. And then I could just take the shoulder and let's say drop it down to a foot. The issue you may find there is if you wanted that lane to be 12 feet between the face of curb and the edge of the lane, you would then want to adjust the common lane width down to 11 so that you have the shoulder and common lane add up to 12 feet. Um, then you would just need to go into your section labels and start playing with some of those settings to turn off uh, parts of those labels and override dimensions. Again, I'll have a separate video for this as well. Um, this is a really useful tool for a lot of different applications in Beyond Typicals. Just the ability to dive into your automatic section labels and start playing with some of those settings to override it so it looks the way you want it to. So see here on the shoulder and common lane, I've turned off the vertical leader line. So now I don't have that white stem appearing between the shoulder and the common lane. 
I'm still getting those white leader lines on the outside from the leader lines for the common lane and the leader lines for the curb. And then for this shoulder, I can go ahead and just turn that label off by unchecking this use label button. And then on my common lane, which is representing 12 feet, I can simply go down to override dimension and type in 12 as my override dimension text. And then if I do want to center it over that lane for other applications, this might be a little bit more off center, but you can always adjust the label horizontal alignment to move that label just over the center of those two elements that make up the 12 foot lane.